My name is uh, Pastor Ray Minicon. Um, I'm uh, from the Cubby Cubby people in southeast Queensland on my father's side, and the uh, Gurang Gurang people on my mother's side, which is around the Bundaberg area. I'm uh, a minister here, or a pastor here, with my wife at uh, St John's Anglican Church, with the whole congregation here at St John's. We're trying a different different model of ministry. Now we call our ministry the Scar Tree Ministries because on this property here at St John's there is a tree, it's, a, it's an ironbark tree, that we believe has been uh, here you know, before or around 1788. And the old people have cut a section out of the tree for, for one of their utensils or uses, either as, as a shield or as a, uh, as a coolamon. And it's the only um, scarred tree in the Sydney CBD area, so it's very special to us and very important to us, and it's here located on St John's Church Yard. So that's why we call ourselves the Scarred Tree Ministries, but it also references also to our people who are very, have been scarred since 1788, so it's got those kind of connotations with it. And I do a lot of, do a lot of work with the stolen generations who are always on the margins there and very, very scarred people. The Bible is tribal. It comes from a tribal group over there in um, the Middle East and that we have this opportunity or invitation to actually look at that particular message from with tribal eyes. We also know that Jesus was a tribal man. He came from the tribe of Judah. And as a tribal man, he also had... Um, totems like our people do and so one of his totems for example was the Lion of Judah or the Lamb of God or he said I am the water of life now that appeals to us because of, or it connects us to that kind of ways of thinking in terms of the tribal ways of thinking because you know me I'm a one of my uh, responsibilities as an indigenous person or as an aboriginal person is custodians of, uh, of water, so water is one of my totems, as well as the koala, as well as the kookaburra, for me, my, that's my grandmother's totem, and uh, in our belief systems, it's the kookaburra that usually sings the world into existence, because we're all connected to this total universe here in so many different ways, and one of those ways is through what we call our totems, totem systems. So. When we fit all that together, we live not in a disconnected world, we live in a world that is connected to each other. And so the trees and the animals and the stars and the moons and the whole landscape there, the rocks and the mountains, are all part of our family, brothers and sisters and all of that. So we identify with those particular aspects of, uh, of, the, of the landscape and of all living things because of our belief systems, um, which we believe came from what you know, white man calls the dreaming. The loss of all of these beautiful species that are a part of our family uh, has been a part of our pain and a part of our suffering as, as Indigenous peoples. And here we live here in the Sydney Basin here. It's not only the flora and fauna that uh, has been lost here or been transplanted or in so many different ways, but it's also the people themselves, who, the custodians of that particular knowledge. They've also been, um, well, genocide, as far as I can see here, because they don't exist here. They've all been wiped out. Indigenous theology starts in Genesis 1. Bereshit Elohim, in the beginning, God. And that's a much more better starting point. Because as you go through, even in the first book of Genesis, you look at the, f the last verse of the first chapter, and he says that everything is good, very good. All that he has created is good. It's good for all of us. We, we don't like the word God. We prefer the word creator. Because when you go back to the beginning, you're going back to your creator, the one who made everything. And it's a better starting point for us. And then once we see that particular uh, telescopic view of the world, we can see that 
everything. Like we, we like Aboriginal people would say, we're all related <laughs> to everything. Every life form is a part of what he created back there in the beginning. And so that's a better starting point for us. The second part of that is that we also know that we have uh, sinned and we have you know, destroyed so much and, uh, uh, of, of this ecosystem that our Creator has given us freely and graciously and lovingly. One of the other books of the Bible that helps me to reflect upon the, the pain and the struggle of this is really a little mini Bible in the book of Job. Because Job starts with uh, a similar kind of story where uh, uh, God and the devil comes together and, and he says to Job, look, have you seen anyone so righteous as my servant Job? And uh, Job tests God and says, well, if you took everything away from him, he's going to curse you. And uh, what we find in the first passage of or the first uh, chapter or the first two chapters of Job is, you know, everything's been taken from him. He's lost his uh, family. He's lost all of his possessions. He's lost um, um, everything that he depended upon in terms of his livelihood. It's a bit like our story here in, in, in Australia. Everything has been destroyed. And the last picture you see of Job is that he's sitting in the burnt out ashes of his uh, ranch house and he's scratching his sores with a bit of uh, cow manure. Now that's us. That's where we've come to as Aboriginal people. We've been so decimated and so um, abused and brutalised that it's uh, very difficult for us to, to, to you know, find a way forward. And then you get his, uh, Job's comforters coming around and they're, they're all, they've all got their theories on, on all of this. And uh, we've got so many theories about us that it's, you know, and a lot of the th theories started with uh, Darwin theories. Yeah, yeah, Darwinistic theories predominated and dominated how people saw us because uh, many of the uh, false claims about us came from that particular philosophy. Uh, one of the uh, Aboriginal, one of the uh, <coughs> priests here, uh, one of the priests who came to these, these shores here, uh, said this about my people. He says, look, you know, the Aboriginal peoples are the most degraded of the human race. Time has not yet arrived for them to receive the great blessings of civilization and the knowledge of Christianity. Now, uh, his name was Samuel Marston, Reverend Samuel Marston. He went over to New Zealand and helped them formulate a treaty. <laughs> but that was his perception of us, came from this Darwinistic theory. And there was also another politician in uh, the 1900s there when they were talking about setting up a federal uh, government here, who said that uh, there is no scientific evidence that the Aborigine is a human being at all. So you had the political sides of it as well as the religious sides of us uh, having these perceptions about us that didn't fit into their worldview. And so we were condemned. <laughs> they practiced or they played God on us. <laughs> and they tried to take us back into Genesis 3, and kick us out of the flaming garden, our own garden, really. And so when you see the story of Job in that particular way, when these uh, uh, philosophers came around and tried to encourage him to say, well, he must have done something wrong to deserve all of this, at the end of it, our creator himself comes along and uh, he has this question to Job. In spite of all the pain that he's gone through and all the troubles and all the trials and all the tribulations and all the philosophies that came around to try to help him to see his own mistakes or whatever, the Lord says, well, Job, I've got a few questions for you too. <laughs> and the question he asked was, you know, were you there when I created everything? That Berit Elohim. In the beginning. 
And to me, it was, it, it was an invitation, and it still is an invitation for all peoples to go back to the beginning. That's why I don't have much of a difficulty with, with what we would call creation science or science around these kind of issues, because this investigation back into the beginning takes us back into what he has already put in place. And so uh, uh, that's the ways in which um, our creator spoke to Job. And I believe he has this powerful message for us, this invitation to come back, not into Genesis 3, but back into Genesis 1, in the beginning. Bereshit that of him. <laughs> and rethink and re-see things through our Creator's eyes. Not our theories, but through His eyes. Um, and that's when you can see, in terms of the message that uh, Jesus came to restore, it's not just to save me from my own personal sins, which is so minute in the biggest, in the biggest you know, s scope of things or the bigger perception of things. He died to save the whole universe. That's a completely, that's not the message that we're getting from our evangelical traditions. It's all about me personally. And it excludes this whole uh, wonderful notions of our, our, um, our global home our creation, all that God has given us as a gift. And so salvation to me is how do we then not just save ourselves, <laughs> but save the blooming planet that we live in, his creation. And we can only do that if we take this invitation that he gave to Job and that he's giving to us, and let's go back to the beginning. And if we can go back into the beginning, we can possibly put things into place. That's a huge big possibility. But the way in which I think the world is going today, uh, this particular voice of the indigenous peoples, we know is marginalized, probably won't be heard. Like our creator's voice is never heard anyways, even in the church or in any of the other religious uh, institutions or religions on the planet. They're listening to themselves. They're not listening to his voice or they're not looking through his eyes. And so we've got a long way to go in order to try to convince people <laughs> uh, who they are in Christ because Christ is the one who took us back into that beginning point and said, this is, this is the starting point, not Genesis 3, Genesis 1. That's the starting point. If we can get back there, we might be able to uh, save our little home, our little planet here, our land and our mother.